Yes. Uh, How we doing? Oh my God. Ha. Early morning. I can see you. Can you see me? I can see you and you look great for everybody. Uh, Perry's in LA, so it's only 8.30 in the morning. Not everybody in Los Angeles are is as foggy in the head as I am. So uh, well, don't promise do anything. But you know, I, not everybody's savvy to the Zoom and I'm so happy to have you on. For my fans, this here and for everybody watching, this is Perry DeMarco, the amazing Perry DeMarco. Well, this no, is no, Perry no. DeMarco. Yeah, hi everybody. Tell me all about yourselves. Isn't it great our girl Dina's working? Isn't that beautiful that in this horrible crisis, this talented individual is working. I'm, I'm very proud and happy for you. Thank you so much, Perry. I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled. But honey, this is about you and I'm super excited. So are you a nice Jewish boy from Minnesota? No, I, I'm not. I'm, I have Jew, I'm a closet Jew. I'm, um, I'm, um, I was baptized, I'm, I'm from Minnesota. And um, yes, I did know Prince, we're the same age. No, we didn't go to high school. Um, I grew up idolizing people like Richard Pryor and Freddie Prinz Sr., if you know who he was. Of course. Okay. And um, I looked a lot like him. Um, I had long hair and a mustache, and I loved stand-up comedy. And I came out to L.A. to do stand-up comedy, and it, it was um, surreal. Okay, I came out in 1980 at the age of 19 or 20 years old. In April of 1980, I was this Chicano kid from Minnesota who loved Freddie Prinze, wanted to do stand-up and get a sitcom. And within weeks of my arriving in LA, this movie came out, Fame. Yes. And it was all, of, and one of the characters was this Puerto Rican kid who idolized Freddie Prinze, wanted to do stand-up comedy. And I just sat there and I thought, what the? And my very first audition um, I, I was at the comedy store and somebody said, we're doing this TV show based on the movie Fame and we want you to audition. I was auditioning for myself. I was auditioning to play the part of this Latino kid who wanted to be the next Freddie Prinze. And I'm so glad I did wow. not. Wow. Yeah, isn't that surreal? Isn't oh my that God, fun? that's your dream come true. Well, it would have been a nightmare come true because um, I was very immature and um, I was indulgent. But uh, anyway, I'm here now um, in the... Go ahead. You talk. I'm just... No, 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 no. I... It's all... I, I'm, this is what this show is all about. It's just hearing people in the ent entertainment industry, their interesting story, you know, their interesting experience, not story on, you know, how do, how do we get to LA? How do you actually, you know, wind up in the industry? And, you know, there, well, there you um, it. it. It started out with love and it started out with comedy. Um, going back to being a little boy and seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, I said, I can't do that. But um, also on Ed Sullivan, they had Buddy Hackett. Mm -hmm. Buddy Hackett, um, this chunky little Jewish guy. Yeah. And I did, you know, I'm this Mexican Catholic. I don't know about it. And Buddy Hackett had this great routine. He was talking about um, his whole life. He'd had this fire burning inside him that kept him going and it kept him going. And he always had this fire burning in him. Then he went into the army. And after a couple of weeks, the fire went out and he thought he was dying. Turned out the fire was heartburn. His mother's <laughs> cooking gave him heartburn. But I cracked up because I thought this weird little guy eats spicy foods. He's right. weird looking. He's different than everybody else. And that turned me on to comedy. And um, while I'm tone deaf and I can't sing, ever since I was a little boy, I've had comedic timing. I knew how to tell a joke and I had an incredible memory and I, I would crack my poppy up. I would come home, I swear to God, I would come home from Catholic school and I'd be saying, boy, that mother superior is a real yutz. If she <laughs> thinks I'm gonna, if she thinks I'm gonna schlep down there and do my Hail Marys, she's got her kepi up her tukas, you know? So um, uh, even though I was from Minneapolis, I love New Yorkers, you know, Italians, Jews, 
Latinos, Greeks, anybody. Um, and I'm very envious of you right now. There's nothing like autumn in New York. I, would, I really would love to be anywhere in New York State right now. Um, Bonnie, the best of times, worst of times. I'm having a blast. I mean, I got to say. I'm I got, so happy I for got you. lucky. I really got lucky. I'm really thrilled. I'm so um, thrilled. Well, Mazel Tov. Mazel tov. <laughs> Exactly. You know, when we worked together, I loved and I've seen you do these characters that just like blow my mind. You know, even I got to tell you, I watched your reel. I absolutely loved it. And then I watched I watched the 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 the. Uh, the trailer for nude nuns and what the heck is that? Nude nuns and big guns. Man, I am gonna watch that whole film. That was it's it's amazing. It's it's great fun. Um and the whole sometimes you can be I did two films and uh well, I've done more than that, but two yeah. films where the entire set uh, not the set, the entire crew, the the entire we were all on the same page and we wow. were all buzzing. Um, I did, at any rate, Nude Nuns was just like that. And um, everybody was on the same page. And we all knew what we were doing. We were doing Robert Rodriguez, um, an homage to um, those drive, what do they call them? Drive-in films, what are they? It's oh, yeah. Grindhouse. Grindhouse. Grindhouse um, films. What is it? Uh, freak show entertainment, baby. Right, exactly. But I mean, it's it's like an homage to Roger Corman biker flicks, and yeah. um, that is how I kind of see myself. Uh, a guy whom I love is Harry Dean Stanton. If you're familiar with him, no. Well, he, you'd recognize the face. He's been everywhere. He was yeah. in these films. He was in The Rose. Uh, with Bette Medler, oh, he was love. in the, he was in The Godfather. Sure. Um, he's he's just and that's kind of how I see myself now. Um, well, it's a youth market, and I started out young, and I'm glad to say that I realize I'm no longer young. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and so when I meet with people, they say, "How do you market yourself?" And I say, "Well, I'm." Gina Rodriguez's father. I'm I'm Jessica Alba's father, and uh, there's chunky roles for men your age, though. I mean, women have a harder time, you know, at, at our age yes. than, than men do. I mean, this and this and yes, and you're such a phenomenal, phenomenal actor from the work that I've seen. I mean, are you, well, you were you say. on going on auditions before the uh, this whole dun 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 COVID shit? Everything with um, I was making things happen and yeah. uh, and everything like that. And uh, even a manager had seen me and said, Yeah, we got to talk. And then everything yeah. just kind of shut down, yeah. And um, but the whole industry is like that, and so it's done. yeah, it's done, it's crazy. They um, actually tried to go to Big Bear to shoot some stuff, and people got sick. I'm like, Yeah, because you all marched up there and brought the COVID with you. Thank you for bringing Duh. that up. No, thank you for bringing that up because two of my friends, one of them, a uh, Latino actor, had booked a movie and he'd gone so far as they'd flown him to the Dominican Republic to start shooting yeah. right when COVID and, uh, and they shut down. So as soon as he got to the Dominican Republic, they shipped him right back to L.A. Yeah. Um, another one of my friends was doing theater. Uh, she's, you know. Latina LA based actress and she was doing an equity show yeah. in Cincinnati I think I don't know it had been going pretty successfully for like two or three weeks and all of a sudden that got shut down yeah so I think it's worse to have a gig and have it taken away from you than to um have the opportunities taken away from you the one uh, actor in the film that I'm working on now, uh, his, his character name is Max. His name is Ronald Walker, AKA. Well, he was on a production in New York and then they mm -hmm. were flying. They got contracted to go to Tennessee and start flying all over and the production was shut down. This is the first thing he's working on in six months. This is the first production that he's agreed to do in six months. How very beautiful. I mean, I'm just so happy for you. Tell me about your production. What What is this? Uh, oh, this is, uh, it, no, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. 
Okay, so this is what <laughs> it's a, a a feature by uh, this guy named Kells, and he has a. a it's called uh, Stash, and it's really a great little script, a, a feature script, not even a little script. And it's mm-hmm. a, an urban godfather, urban taken, urban four brothers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's going. We got second second shoot day uh, Wednesday. But let me t- ask you, everybody I interview, they, particularly if you've come to LA in your time, we're on Baywatch, we're mm-hmm. on Melrose Place. Mm-hmm. What a time for, uh, because Melrose was like the first series. You, you don't need... No, 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 no. Um, I'm the kiss of death. Why I get every... I, no, 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 no. I get everything just as it's jumped the shark. Oh, no. No, no I get a kick out of it. Um, the first thing I ever did when I, you know, uh, was Hill Street Blues. Fabulous. Very fabulous. And um, during its last season, Hill Street so. Blues, uh, Bochco, Bochco, Stephen Bochco had gone on to L.A. Law and that was getting all the heat. And so um, Hill Street Blues, although full of great actors and I loved what I did and I worked with Veronica Hamill and that she was my Fabulous. lawyer. Fabulous. She was my lawyer. That was exciting. Oh, fun How- little tidbit. Um, my character was, of course, a drug dealer. And um, my character's name was Raul Benitez. And the actress playing the bailiff was this nice older Southern woman. And it was hysterical watching this poor gal trying to say Raul Benitez. <laughs> I just, the, the trial for Ra, you know, it was just wonderful. Oh, no. I got. I got to work, uh, Jeffrey Tambor was the judge. Wow. Uh, George Weiner, a great character actor, was the prosecuting attorney. Wow. And beautiful, tall Victoria Hamill was my attorney. And I'm bringing this up because um, the story is at the end, she gets called away to a more important trial and they throw in a substitute lawyer who is unfamiliar with the case. And what Bochco did, which is why I love Bochco, is that um, you've got the Latino drug dealer. So he says, okay, if we've got bad Latinos, we're going to have good Latinos. And he gave me a Latina actress uh, named Terry Oyos to play the substitute attorney. And I bring her up because right now she's Latina grandmother number one. She's the Latina grandmother uh, on 911. Lone Star. She's the Latino grandmother on um, some other show. Anyway, if you yeah. see a lat- and I thought, what about me? What about me? And it's funny because in the 80s, I would always go up against Tony Plana, whom you might remember as the father on Ugly Betty. He was <laughs> right. Ignacio. And I would always go up for auditions and there would always be Tony Plana and he would always get it. And I'm watching okay. my girl, Terry Oyos now as the Latina grandmother. And who do you suppose they cast as the Latina grandfather? Tony Plana. So to quote David Byrne, same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. I know so many amazing New York actresses that uh, were, you know, had a really big chance of uh doing it and then glenn close and the other one came <laughs> glenn close and who's the one uh my devil wears prada then glenn anyway meryl streep meryl streep and then glenn close came out and that was it right they, they got every role at that time right. and, and still uh, do and they still do at be you right Good for you. Hollywood, thank, they need to you. switch it up. They're so concerned no. about guaranteed funds. You know what I mean? It pisses me off. Well, now it's even worse, honey. Um, now I understand that young people, people in their 20s and early 30s, now they're cast according to how many followers they have on Instagram. 
I know it's just this Hollywood big boy system, you know, that just burns me up. And you know what? It, now is the brief time for independent features to get out there and to do their stuff because they need content. And the, you know, the, the $50 million budget movies are shut down. So if there's any light at the end of the tunnel over this horrific COVID thing, it's the fact that, you know, if we can stay healthy and get these stories done and in, it, it'll, it'll be a nice change because it's really bad. It's the system is just stuck. Well, um, that might, I like what you're saying. That might be the silver lining because, um, these multiplex films that were designed for the multiplex and they've got the Burger King and McDonald's tie in with the figures. That's all kaput right now. What? And the only people that are working are shooting, you know, with their iPhones, with their, and their, um, you know, using split screens because it's a new way of making film and only yeah. hungry, hungry young Spartans like yeah. you know how to make film, you know, stitch things together and, and cobble together a film yeah. because that big um, Hollywood machinery has now been disabled. And it's been disabled. Like, it's been disabled. And people like us who are scrambling to make a living are making a living, making a film. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, there was this show that premiered last season before COVID-19 that just made my heart sing. It's a primetime network show called uh, For Life. And 50 Cent, rapper 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson is like the producer of it. And I was just enthralled because they had all these people of color, all these different ages. You know, I turned on and I see this um, 60, 70 year old Anglo guy and so on and so forth. And I started watch and, um, you know, the whole prison, it's about this guy wrongfully accused of a crime and he gets his law degree while he's in prison. And now he goes out and he makes sure that doesn't happen to other people. And I'm so excited because I was watching the Emmys and there was a commercial, it got picked up, it's coming back. Yeah. So as for myself, um, just like you said, if you can stay healthy and stay strong, um, and you're and stay hungry, yeah. you can go out and find work. Uh, exactly. I believe I, and I'm just hopeful for that. It's like you said, there there is work for people our age, my age. I think I'm older than you are. Um, you got to look for it. The, the problem is, is that a lot of people our age don't realize it. They don't, they still think that they're, you know, in their forties and they go out for a young father or macho stud and it's like, babe, get real. Um, me, I'm just fortunate to uh, be pretty realistic. I don't know. I think I'm like, Oh, there's some choppy people. roles for people. There's some good roles out there for, you know, everybody wants to be the young son star, but guess what? It takes, it takes a, it takes a village. I mean, the, the Max, the, the, who is not the lead Jay, who is phenomenal. You know, uh, we have, it has a juicy, juicy role. I mean, um, amazing role. Like, as I said, I think there's, you know, once they get off that carbon copy of what's successful, and, we, and you know, we, if we would just all get off that carbon copy of what's successful and go out there and find new avenues to, to, to show, you know, to be creative, it's a lot, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of people our age, you know, in front of the camera, behind the camera. It's, it's an exciting time. Most definitely. Um, writing is, is great fun. Um, you know, it, anything you can write something like you, an assistant director, um that is just so beautiful I, I i wouldn't know how to go about doing that but i'm like working on screenplays and and not just for myself but yeah. for other people as oh, well oh yeah i'm sure you are what are you working on are you working on anything now because now's the time to write i'm trying to find inspiration and i'm mm. trying to um i want to do an homage to that uh greed is good 80s uh my favorite project is you know like this um we call it a coconut that that would be like a latino sellout and it's um the self-satisfied um real estate you know bilingual uh chicano real estate agent who 
is basically a glorified slumlord and he preys upon immigrants trying to buy their first house and he gets them into their house and he's you know takes all the, and then he gets his comeuppance you know i mean some little morality play or something like that but um, love it love the concept one, oh oh another thing that really warms my heart um i don't know if it's because netflix has deep pockets and they've got you know oodles of money especially with the success of the irishman but uh there were three latino themed shows uh two of them on network television uh one of them was grand hotel and it was good good actors and what not but it's glitzy and everybody's sexy and everybody's young and everybody's hot um and another one was called uh the baker and the beauty or the beauty and the baker and the same thing everybody's young and sexy and hot and it's kind of cool because when i first heard about the baker and the beauty i recognized the names carlos gomez and linda vidal and i said oh yeah well they're hot and they're sexy they were hot and sexy in the 90s <laughs> now now wisely beautifully they're the parents of the hot this is the way it goes and if you want to be an actor move with the times poor burt reynolds you know wearing a girdle and a dark dark black toupee poor fay dunaway getting all this plastic surgery what one, about that queen movie the one she made her own, she so she produced her own queen movie she was playing 30 years old making out with this 30 year old guy she was like 80 yeah. i was like why yeah you just feel sorry for him I, yeah and i then, did i was like oh no and then you see my minnesota home girl jessica lang ah. beautiful beautifully playing her age and right. giving strength and conviction and machismo she's right. taken her years Ooh. she ha- she hasn't grown old she's grown up and she's a full-fledged woman and she's Fabulous. got machismo every one of her roles has got um strength mm. you know she's you know she's a force to be reckoned with Love and that it. is a great lesson for actresses because if you can remember Jessica Lang her breakthrough role was as the blonde hottie who had a topless scene in King Kong wow she did that when i graduated you know she was this you know hot blonde girl who showed her boobs in King I Kong i remember seeing it i remember the day i saw the movie and look at her now you know she's yeah. continued to grow and and just be um Wow. You know, one of the founding, I don't know, somebody to look up to. Her work is oh, excellent. Phenomenal. Just she's just we as a matter of no lie, we were just talking about her the other day. It's just like it, it it blows my mind, you know, when we free ourselves up to not worry about what other people think and get real. Wow, it's really it's really, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And um I, I don't know. Ask, ask a talk about yourself or questions. No, 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 Perry. Oh, I don't want to talk about me. Oh, no, excuse no. me. Um, <laughs> right off in the mouth here. Um, I was talking about those three Latino shows, mm-hmm. The Beauty and the Baker, um, Grand Hotel, and on Netflix, mm-hmm. Gente Fight. Now, the Latino shows on network television, again, corporate America saying we got to get people to tune in, we got to get paid for this. We're going to have sexy young people. Both those shows got canceled. Ah. Netflix oh. Hintified, which has gritty, hard-working Mexican mm. people like me, mm. got picked up. That is so fantastic. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Let's hear it for ugly little people. Oh, yeah, man. you're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. It, it, it's they, they broke the status quo. People were like, we don't want to see that same old stuff with sparkling young people. We want to see some gritty real stuff. I love it. I know, and I'm just um and again, it might be because Netflix doesn't uh I I don't know. Netflix, I'm just thrilled. That's that's, that's yeah. The, I mean, good. Their their eyes are open. Their eyes are open. Thank I'm I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. I I am too. That you've given us so much to think about and to chew on, you know what I mean? And to really 
to really uh, listen to that. I think, um, I think I'm going to say thank you so much for coming on, Perry. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, yes. Good luck with everything, honey. Please keep in touch. Let me know. Um, you um, just, you just do, you do you because it's you working. Too, you too. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye, my darling. Bye bye.